Mr. Dion O'Connell. Thank you. And uh, don't take this personally, but more importantly, we have Mr. Dennis P. Zion here um, and a quorum. So with that, let's begin the meeting. Do we have any public comment? Okay. Um, if we can continue item number one till our next meeting. Um, I think we're waiting for that to be finished. So with that, let's take up item number two. Item number two is a, is a CLA report relative to the city's position on S-117 coal, which would provide fraud protection to homeowners seeking consulting services to avoid losing their homes to foreclosure pursuant to resolution Parks, Garcetti, Alarcon, Brian Randall with our offices. Here to Great. So where, where are we with the, the status of this, Mr. Randall? Um, <clears throat> currently, it's, it's, it passed the Senate, and mm -hmm. it's pending in the Assembly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you mean in, in the House? Oh, excuse me. It's, it's federal, right? Federal. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's, it's pending in committee right now. Okay. In the Banking Committee. Okay. So it hasn't passed the uh, Senate committee yet? No, it hasn't. There. Okay. Um, and this, does it, this builds up on, on the law that we passed here locally? Essentially, it's very similar in design? Yes, it has identical provisions to the city's ordinance, mm -hmm. but the city's ordinance allows for three or four additional days to cancel the, um, for the homeowners to cancel the contract. Mm -hmm. And the federal bill does not preempt state and, and local law. Mm -hmm. All right. Do um, you have any questions about this? Mm -mm. Design? Okay. We'll go ahead and adopt the resolution. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Next item. I, oh, we don't have any cards on this one do, either, do we? Uh, no cards. Okay. All right. Number but three, please. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> uh, I, I just want to, I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's two bills. One is uh, 739, and the other one is, uh, I forgot the number down. From 117. On this matter? That's item three. Okay. We're, we're, another, another item. Oh, yep. Yeah. Do you, and you want to speak on that? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Um, if we can just grab a card right there, if you don't mind filling that out, we'll make sure we we, we get you in there as well. Let's uh, take up item number three then. Item number three is a CLA report relative to the city's position on HR 739, Roy Ballard, the Security and Financial Empowerment Act that will promote the economic security and safety of victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, or stalking. Pursuant to resolution, Garcetti Perry, Annie Danino with our offices here for you. Okay. And we've been joined by Mr. Kretz. We just uh, passed, uh, we continued number one, Mr. Kretz, to the next meeting. We just passed number two, which we're happy to add your name to as well, if you'd like to, on the fraud protection for homeowners uh, seeking foreclosure avoidance assistance. Um, so on 739, uh, why don't you give us a report on this, please? Okay. Um, HR 739, the Security and Financial Empowerment Act, or the SAFE Act, would provide various protections for victims of domestic or sexual violence. Specifically, the act would allow employers to take uh, employees, excuse me, to take up to 30 days of unpaid leave to handle domestic violence-related issues, such as obtaining medical care or attending court appearances. Uh, number two, allow victims who are forced to leave their jobs because of domestic violence to qualify for unemployment benefits. Authorize state use of funds to provide non-reoccurrent short-term emergency benefits to victims of domestic violence on emergency leave. Prohibit employers from discriminating against victims of domestic violence in areas such as hiring, compensation, and other conditions of employment. Prohibit insurance providers from dropping insurance coverage of domestic violence victims because of fear of abuse-related claims. And the provision in this bill um, dealing with emergency leave and non-discrimination against domestic violence are in line with the city's current workplace domestic violence policy. And the CLA's office, the Community Development Department, and the Human Services Department have all provided their support. Okay. Um, why don't we take the public comment, and then we'll see if there's any questions or discussion from the committee. Um, Mr. Saxton, if you'd like to come forward, do we get a seat here for you. Um. <coughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Absolutely. Get you uh, yogurt next okay. time. Um, <laughs> transition. Since sure. 739, right? Yes, since 739. Okay. Correct. Well, um, <clears throat> this is an economic bad time, uh, but this bill would give uh, people um, life, uh, lifetime employment uh, by only, being, uh, only declaring that they're a domestic violence um, survivor. And I think that this, that, that our objection is to, I'm sorry, take a breath. Uh, our objection is simply that uh, 
this would always be a bad bill to support. This is now a bad bill for the city, who is in dire straits as well as many other municipalities and states, um, to support. It puts a burden that the city could not sustain onto uh, businesses across the country. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. your comments. Okay. Um, I know you reported here that there's 11 states that have uh, leave from work to go to court, the doctor, and other steps for domestic violence in, the, in their lives. What what is the threshold for determining, um, you know, who who would be able to um, be uh, legally seen as a survivor? Or or victim of domestic violence? Um, I think my understanding was from when I read the bill is basically an employee would have to provide an affidavit saying that, you know, they were under some kind of domestic violence position mm -hmm. and essentially provide that to their employer. So it would be something, mm -hmm. you know, sworn statement saying that that's the position they were in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know we, 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 uh, we talked with uh, Congresswoman Roy Ball Allard, uh, whose district we're actually sitting in right now about this, and uh, she looked, I know there's... Um, there's two pieces. There's the the uh, Employment Sustainability Act and the and the Insurance Protection Act as well, and this was something that uh, had been done at, at the state and local levels, but not at the the national levels. Um, are there any other questions from the members? I have a couple, Mr. Kretz. Go ahead, Mr. Kretz. Uh, I don't necessarily have a question. Mm -hmm. I probably would just have a, a comment that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, unfortunately, I had the. Uh, experience while I was uh, a council member in West Hollywood of having a, a city employee who was actually shot to death in a, in a domestic violence dispute, and uh, you know I, I don't know what whether whether it would have made it easier, but certainly if if requirements were there to uh, to give them time to find an alternative uh, location and take time off work, mm -hmm. I mean my my opinion would probably be colored by that event, but I certainly. Uh, would think we'd want to make every effort to to uh, make it easy to avoid those kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Gretz. Mr. Zai? Uh, I know that, listen to the gentleman who spoke, uh, Mr. Saxton, regarding the employer employee relationship. I, I served on a domestic violence shelter, Haven Hills Better Women Shelter, so I've seen the tragedies that occur with domestic violence. The concern is that it not be abused and that the documentation, because there's different types of domestic, there's different types of domestic violence. There's verbal domestic violence, there's physical domestic violence, there's a lot of domestic violence, just like elder abuse, it comes in different forms. Is there anything requiring police report, police investigation, any type of the documentation? I know, for example, in divorce cases, it's not uncommon for one spouse or the other to claim child abuse or child neglect concern I have is that we support it but we have safeguards so it's not abused so someone can't use an excuse as we see in many divorce cases where one person is charging the other with some harm to the children it turns out there was no harm but it was a way to try and prove their case right well, I'm just I think we need to do it but I, I need some safeguards Right. Well, I'm just looking here on Section 102 of the bill, um, dealing with what's required to actually have an, an employee, for example, take some time off. And, like, for example, here in Section um, 2. You probably have more two. detail than we have. In right. Yeah. No, I'm just actually looking at the legislation. Like, for example, they give here that they require an employee may satisfy the certification requirement um, to provide to their employer by a, a sworn statement be documentation from an employee agent or volunteer of a victim of a domestic services organization, an attorney, a member of the clergy, or other medical or other professional from whom the employee's family or household member has sought assistance in addressing domestic violence, um, dating violence, sexual assault, stalking, and, and other effects of domestic violence, or C, a police or court record, or D, other corroborating evidence. So I, um, based on the fact that there is um, colons here. I'm assuming it could be any of these or, or more than one, just depending on the, the specifics of the situation. The bill also provides that no more than 30 days per 12 
month period. Right. And, it, and, so it's, and I want to be clear, it's unpaid leave. So it's, yeah, not, it's not it's paid leave. It's unpaid and, leave. And it's, yeah. um, and it's, un, it's to be able to collect unemployment insurance if you leave the job because of that reason. That's not um, much of a benefit for very long. Um, no, the unpaid leave, could they use the vacation time or overtime? Or is it unpaid? Obviously. I mean, I think for somebody who's, who, you know, if, if somebody were to somehow lie about this and say something, I mean, to be on unpaid leave, there's very little financial incentive to do that because um, you're, you're unpaid during that time. So that, that no, certainly saying, gives me as comfort. As far as the unpaid, could they use vacation instead of not losing pay? Yeah, I believe. The bill, the bill has a loss of benefits provision that an employee is not losing any benefits they have, so I think that that might be seen as protections on that score, that the, if the employer has regulations and rules that allow the, you know, that they could use that. So it looks like those kinds of, con, you know, concepts are in the bill. So in other words, it's their time. It's not costing the employer anything other than right. the loss of the employee. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But I, I just wanted to make sure that I like the fact there's a police report, there's a police investigation, because oftentimes it's not reported, and yeah. so people don't have an opportunity to take advantage of what is permitted to safeguard those people who really need this. Right. Yep. And I think what you cited is a number of issues that would qualify to have a safeguard other than just a person's affidavit that I'm a victim of domestic violence. Yep. And that, that's the concern to, to satisfy so there's not an abusive situation of the employer. In other words, someone is making something that doesn't exist. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? That's not, I, I'd move approval of it. Okay. Second. All right. With unanimously approved then. That. Thank you. Next item, please. Item number four is a CLA report relative to the city's position on SB 378 Romero Charter School Facility Grant Program, which would increase the number of charter schools eligible for charter school facility grant program funds. Pursuant to resolution Han Wezar, this is um, currently a two-year bill. It's a Senate bill. It did not leave the Appropriations um, Committee, Senate Appropriations Committee. It's on the suspense file at that location. Okay. Jack Reef is here to report. Okay. You have any questions? You guys want to get a report on it? Yep. Okay. 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 Uh, good afternoon. Um, currently, charter schools have two main methods in which they access uh, facilities, one of which is the Charter Facilities Grant Program, also known as SB 740 funds. And um, the funds help charter schools pay for facility costs based on criteria, including that at least 70% of the students qualify for free or reduced priced meals. And this bill would allow more charter schools to qualify for the SB 740 funds by lowering the threshold from 70 to 50 percent. And SB 378 is sponsored by the California Charter School Association and is supported by LUSD. There's no registered opposition. And as John says, to your bill. Okay. Any questions? No. Move the item. All right. Second. We will unanimously move that as well. Number five, please. And um, item number five is a CLA report relative to the city's position on SB 657 Steinberg, eradicating slavery and human trafficking, which would require retail sellers and manufacturers to develop, maintain, and implement policies relating to their compliance with federal and state law regarding the eradication of slavery and human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Pursuant to resolution Garcetti Gruel, this also is a two year bill. It's um, in the Senate appropriation suspense file. All right. Uh, Mr. Saxon, would you like to come forward on number five, please? Uh, this one's a little different. Um, it, there indeed is a, a uh, burden on business again. Um, but this bill could be a lot better if it uh, dealt with an understanding that I'm going to give you a hope um, of, uh, of, uh, of human traffic and slavery. Uh, over the world, uh, there, there is a problem. Uh, the UN has uh, a uh, I'll, t I'll say a task force, but they've had a sm it's a small study uh, that finds that, um, to tell you the truth, it's a, it's a minor problem compared to all the other problems that we have uh, in this country and, and in the world. But a problem, and it finds that the people who are uh, propagating this are 60% women. They, they would be the people who are making profit off of this. Um, the types of, uh, of activities are all, all over the place, uh, more than you would imagine. Um, uh, 
the people who are victims are 50-50 men and women, about. Um, this bill could be a lot better and a less burden if it were targeted on the condition, on the places in the United States where it is most likely to fester. Um, the, um, uh, the incidents in the United States uh, are much lower than the rest of the world, Asia being the uh, highest. Uh, here, the secret places are where this bill should be directed. And I think it's kind of ironic, but in fact, our most secret place is the domestic violence uh, shelter. Um, the shelters are, the shelters are in fact uh, secret and a place where vulnerable populations occur. And okay. if can we just to uh, change the targeting, mm -hmm. I think that it's fine. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. The suggestion. We can hear the CLA report on it. Okay. Um, right. Is this yours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mr. Eath is closing us out today. <laughs> right. Right. Sorry. Okay. Um, the bill, as John said, the bill requires retail sellers and manufacturers doing business in California uh, to develop, a, develop, maintain, and, and implement a policy to eradicate slavery and human trafficking. But the the bill applies to businesses that uh, have annual sales over two million, mm -hmm. and the policy is to include elements that the company and all of the supply in the all the suppliers in the supply chain will comply with the human trafficking and slavery laws in the country in which they do business and that the company will make a good faith effort to eradicate slavery and human trafficking in the supply chain rather than uh, simply severing its ties with the non-compliant suppliers. And the bill also requires that the policy be posted on the company's website and be um, accessible to the public or be made available upon request. And uh, SB 657 is supported by statewide labor groups and the city's Human Relations Commission. It is opposed by uh, multiple groups, including the California Chamber of Commerce and the California Grocers Association. And opponents say that the legislation is too broad and does not clearly outline how businesses can comply. Okay. This is very similar to the, the city um, anti-sweatshop uh, ordinance that we have. Um, most of the economic uh, slavery that goes on right now um, in the world, and, and there are tens of thousands of folks in the United States uh, who are a victim of this. This would be similar to state law. So I would, I would move uh, approval of this. Um, you know, Second. Um, and those are from FBI statistics, by the way. So, any, any other questions? Okay. All right. We'll go ahead then and we'll move approval of number five. Number six, please. Uh, item six is a CLA report relative to the city's position on AB 167 Adams graduation requirements, which would permit foster children who transition to a new school district in their junior or senior year to be only required to meet state standards for high school graduation and not the graduation requirements that may be imposed by the governing body of the new school district pursuant to resolution Wieser Alarcon. Mm -hmm. This is in the Senate appropriation suspense file. So this um, bill has been moving. Um, Jack Reef is here to report on this item as well. All right. Thanks. Okay. And, uh, uh, what John read the heading pretty much says it all. What this bill does is allows uh, upperclassmen in foster care. You took away your whole report. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, uh, who transferred, uh, so it allows upperclassmen in foster care transferred to a new school to be exempt from any uh, additional require any additional graduation requirements that exceed the state standards that are imposed by a local district. Um, uh, a minor provision also that requires districts to notify students if any requirements that are waived will affect the people's ability to gain admission to post-secondary education. Okay. All right. Seems like a sound recommendation. Um, any questions? No. 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 Okay. We'll go ahead and move approval of number six. Second. All right. And that will be passed unanimously as well. There's no other items on the agenda. You're done. And we are finished with the Rules and Government Committee. Thank you, everybody, for who has come. And thank you, members, for your attendance. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs>